Okay, everybody, I think it's time to get started. So what we're going to be talking about today is abstraction. And as I mentioned last week, this is, this is nothing to worry about. I'm actually going to kind of ease you into it. We'll have uh, three different opportunities to do some drawing today. We'll start uh, pretty uh, early in, the, in the, uh, the situation because I want to show you some artwork, including uh, drawings and paintings by other artists. And then we're going to sort of use each artist as a jumping off point to apply some abstraction to a scene that I'll show you. Um, because I want you to think, if possible, about how to, how to look at the world around you from a sort of a design aspect. And to a certain extent, abstraction is, you know, is stepping away from reality a bit. But that doesn't mean we've got to go like jumping off, <laughs> jumping off the deep end. Um, you know, like I said, you, you know, yes, abstract painting is about things like, you know, uh, you know, tossing paint around and this, that, and the other, which I enjoy doing very much. I think it's great fun. And, and when in drawing, you know, you can also be, you know, loose and free, um, use various different media, you know, tossing them at the paper, all of that kind of thing is, is a lot of fun. But what I want to talk about um, specifically today, and then we'll sort of branch into freer versions of abstraction next week, is how to just look at the realistic world that we see and kind of break it down into interesting design elements. And perhaps when we're drawing, not draw from a sort of technical detail realism point of view, which is sort of what we've been concentrating on recently, you know, with facial features and details and angles and this, that, and the other. But use all that same information to create interesting drawings that are still about something, um, that still have sort of a basis in reality. And so you'll find that things you've already learned, things that we've been talking about for the last couple of months, <laughs> will all be of use. And the mixed media aspect is basically just whatever you happen to have around. I'm going to actually be drawing with you today because um, this was what I sort of came up with for the last minute. I thought, hey, I might as well sketch while everybody else is. So I've got my, you know, boxes full of oddments. I have no idea which ones I'm going to use. I'm going to, you know, try to stick to the drawing media that we've been talking about um, this year, just for the heck of it. I've got some Conte crayon and things in here. But mixed the, look, the idea, mixed media sounds fancy. <laughs> it sounds like somebody knows what they're doing. Um, but really all it is, is just using more than one type of drawing media or painting media, um, or mixing the two together uh, to create whatever it is you want. But there are some useful things to think about as we go forth with that. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and we can get started. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Summer of Drawing, class number 13, Mixed Media Abstraction. And so you, uh, mixed media, like I was just saying, it can be anything you'd like. It can be pencil mixed with paint, pen with charcoal, Conte crayon with charcoal and gouache, uh, you name it. Um, this particular uh, illustration by this uh, artist, Nina Dine, um, is pastel and charcoal on arches. And arches is just a, a brand of really nice watercolor paper um and she decided for for reasons of her own that these were the particular media that she wanted to do this um organic drawing in so it it really there there aren't any rules about this whatsoever it isn't that you pick one thing for one and one for another but perhaps you've got some colored chalk or perhaps you've got some different types of charcoal and pencil and you think to yourself well if i do the main drawing in this one particular medium then I can do the dark bits in this softer dark medium, and then I can add some color in the chalk or pastel or whatever you have. So there's a, there's a great deal of freedom to this. Um, and you could spend, mixed media also applies when we see um, drawings that people have done where they did um, pencil underneath, and then they decided to do the freer stuff with charcoal once they had the basic drawing organized. So that's mixed media as well. It really applies pretty broadly. So the way you decide what you'd like to use is by trying to visualize the outcome. Um, you know, what is your intention? What, what are you hoping it'll look like? Now, having said that, that's kind of scary stuff because most of us have had the experience of wanting to draw something and it coming out nothing like what we thought it was going to be when, when we sort of saw it in our mind's eye. Likewise, you might not even have a clue where to start and you're not really sure which things to pick up. So my advice is, you know, start with whatever medium you're most comfortable 
comfortable with. So that might be pencil. You might just want to do a pencil sketch and say, well, I'm just going to add in a little charcoal and uh, maybe I'll be brave and throw a little colored pencil in at the top on the top at the last minute. You know, there, there isn't any real rule. What's most important is to start seeing how abstraction can be applied. That's more important. You know how I'm always on about this business about you know, observation and practice is the key to mastery. And that technique is just something that sort of happens as we continue to practice, as we know more about what we're up to. So having said that, I just wanted to show you another piece of work by the same artist. Um, and this is definitely, uh, once again, abstraction. This is such a, a beautiful, just, you know, what, two, three colors, charcoal, acrylic, spray paint on packing paper. So it's relatively large. It's really casual and free form. It's definitely abstraction in the sense that, you know, every little detail about the scene wasn't what she was trying to get in there, but she was just trying to get this, this wonderful sense of these shapes, these colors, this person. It's a, it's a really interesting example of mixed media. So abstraction, what, it, what exactly is that? Um, and this is from the Oxford uh, Dictionary, just some sort of really basic ideas. The quality of dealing with ideas rather than events. Um, freedom from representational qualities in art. It's also a state of preoccupation. <laughs> and then the process of considering something independently of its associations, attributes, or concrete accompaniments. And the process of removing something, especially water from a river or other source. So if you take all these sorts of things together, if you think about the realistic drawing that we've been approaching so far, you know, how to draw the scene, how to make it look somewhat like what we see in front of us, and trying to be pretty accurate about it, you know, angles, distance, composition, this, that, and the other. This is saying, you know, that idea, that, that idea that we're looking at of, you know, the, the vast river valley or the, or the beautiful arrangement of objects in front of us, that's all fine and well. But what if we, what if we think instead about, about the idea of it, you know, the, the is vastness of, and beauty and valley, are those the words we can sort of key in uh, to make an abstraction? rather than saying, okay, I'm going to do something that looks just like a picture postcard. So that's the sort of thing to think about as we're, as we're working through this to, um, today. But I think for those of us who love realism, what's important is to, is to go, I can get there, I can include some abstraction in my work because it will simplify what I'm drawing. It will simplify uh, how I look at a complicated scene and pull out the things that I want. And it gives me a way to, in an interesting manner, break up and add interest. So I'm not just doing a wall to wall, everything detailed in every corner. I'm figuring out a way to, to concentrate on what I think is most important. For me, I think abstraction is useful because I get to a point in a drawing or painting where I've had enough, I've had enough. I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to do that sort of wall to wall thing. I have my subject, I've enjoyed drawing it. But what to do with the background, for example, how to deal with that. And abstraction is one of those ways you can get there. So <laughs> you're, you're going, oh, no, not this again, Elizabeth, not the NOTAN again. But I, I wanted to throw this slide in as well, because the NOTAN concept and the idea of design is really key to abstraction, at least as we're getting started here. So if you look at these examples, which we've seen before, you know, the combination of lights and darks, and you look at those bottom um, images, those little images by themselves are abstraction. They are not realism in the sense that we know, we understand what they are, you know, we can identify them, but we haven't drawn every detail of the house, every detail of the bowl or the tree or anything like that. But it doesn't stop it. It doesn't stop those images from, from telling us something, from kind of giving us a, an indication of what's going on there. And it's a, it's a good, starting point for abstraction to think of this idea of lights and darks it's a jumping off point as we know to realism and accuracy and good composition it's also a jumping off point to abstraction so who we're going to talk um talk about to start off with today is an artist i have only just discovered myself and you know it's such a shame i think um I, I feel that there are so many wonderful artists out there and i wish i knew more about every single one of them but maurice wade uh, um, a British artist who had an amazing sense of design. So this, these works 
do have a certain amount of color in. And I'm going to show you paintings as well as drawings today, because sometimes I think it's useful to see how uh, an artist looked at a scene in color as well, because our world around us is in color. We might be drawing in black and white, but somehow we've got to we've we've got to interpret um, interpret what we're seeing into into these shapes. So Maurice Wade's uh, ability to break down a scene into this beautiful, beautiful design. I mean, talk about good Notan, right? I mean, when he saw this scene, he goes, "Oh, that you know, the, this design is nicely balanced." And I, if I keep the shapes simple and I don't start trying to put in every detail, um, I'm going to be able to get somewhere. So his palette was was very sort of calm and dark. He himself didn't he didn't put people in his scenes. He felt that they actually didn't even belong in there. He he just liked the the combination of shapes and such. And you know he didn't put blue sky in and this that and the other. Um, he he just was reacting to what he saw and breaking things down into very simple forms. At the same time, there's complexity here and there's really, really good design. And I just think this sort of thing is really wonderful. So if you were going to, if you saw a scene like this and you wanted to draw it with drawing materials and not using paint, it would be a matter of looking at this and going, well, you know, I've got my pencils, I've got charcoal, I've got Contecra and this, that, and the other. Is color warranted? Do I want color in my scene? Or can I do this using hard and soft drawing materials and maybe some white charcoal for those roofs. If I'm working on toned paper, I can use uh, the darker drawing mediums like charcoal and pencil for most of the buildings and then use, uh, use white, white gouache or white charcoal, white colored pencil or whatever to a uh, white Conte crayon to do the, the sky and to do these reflection areas. So the same kind of decisions that you make in drawing are what you would make in painting as well. If you're if you're drawing now and taking these classes because you want to sort of transition into doing more painting, the same type of ideas apply. So this is another one. There's once again in color, but uh, the abstraction is it's yes, it's a scene that we understand of a village and a wharf, but it's also breaking things down into the elements that he found interesting. He obviously looked at the scene and really liked the way the shadows fell in certain areas, the, the, the roads, the, uh, the reflection in the water, and not actually seeing where this location is myself, I'm imagining that there were probably curved lines and other objects and things in there that he just chose to eliminate because he just wanted this very angular approach. Once again, the chimneys. How often have we seen something like this? You know, uh, maybe maybe stacks of containers or or stacks of boxes or a bunch of, of jugs or bottles or something laid out. The repetition, the repetition of objects. Now we could sit down and draw every one of those glass jars or whatever realistically, or we could do something like Maurice Way did, which is abstract what we're looking at down into its basic elements. Concentrate on on the design the lights and darks and use that as the way to get to an interesting drawing rather than having to concentrate on the detail that we're seeing so this is your first drawing assignment i told you we get started really quickly so we're going to spend about about probably about 10 minutes or so on this one what i'd like you to do is using whatever drawing media you have um, on hand and i'm going to sketch along with you i've got a a bunch of various papers and, and my sketching things. I'm not, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So don't think I've practiced. <laughs> I absolutely have not. But what I'd like you to do is go ahead and, and maybe just do a small sketch or even a couple of small sketches in the 10 minutes that we have um, and try to figure out if you were going to draw this in a more abstract way, like Maurice Wade, how would you go about this? And so before you actually, you know, get in there and start sketching and trying to draw little bricks and things like that, because, you know, I don't want you to do that. No bricks. Um, I'd, I'd say, look at the scene like you would for any composition. Where are the lights and darks? You know, how, how does the sky involve itself as part of this design? Because that sky and where it meets the top of the buildings is very interesting. Um, what shapes and patterns can be accentuated? So, I look at this and one of the things that attracted me to, to this particular image to show you were these steel girders. I thought those were kind of interesting. So when I draw them, I at, might actually put more emphasis on them or make them more prominent in some way than, um, than having them kind of, you know, 
fade into the background, which they do just a little, they kind of fade into the, the wall just a little bit because of their color. So for a drawing, we don't have to worry about that. We're not trying to make this atmospheric. We're trying to make this uh, an abstraction of what we see by concentrating on the interesting patterns, the interesting design. Um, so which drawing media may be appropriate? Um, I think, in fact, I'm going to start drawing and kind of talk along with that, because if I keep talking, I won't, I won't get my drawing done. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to pick a piece of kind of light paper that I have on hand, and I better put my glasses on or I won't be able to see what I'm abstracting. And what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm just going to use, whoops, one of my more hard pencils and, uh, and just get some of these basic, basic lines down. I might even draw a little bit of a rectangle for the edge of the drawing, just so I can see where, the, where I want it to start and stop. Now, what I'm not worried about, I am worried a little bit, of, not worried, but you know, I'm gonna pay attention a little bit to angles and stuff, because one of the things I, I do like is, for example, those angles of the roofs, but I'm not going to go crazy about it. This isn't, I'm not trying to reproduce realistically what this looks like, but I am trying to break down the forms into kind of a Maurice Wade-like view and see if I can accomplish that. So as you're, as you're playing around with drawing and doing different things, especially if you're a beginning drawer, this business of seeing somebody who's done something well and trying to figure out how you would try doing the same thing, you know, pick a, pick a scene and try to do it in, a, in, the, in the way, for, like we are today, of Maurice Wade or somebody else whose work that you like. It's so valuable because, um, I mean, even though we're doing it relatively quickly, we're doing it in 10 minutes or so. And a, a better way would be to spend, you know, at least a half an hour giving this a good shot. There's, there's so much to be learned just from not letting your own inclinations, you know, because my inclination would be to start getting really quite realistic about this. And I would be trying to figure out how to interpret those bricks, but we can't do it can't do it in 10 minutes. So what I'm doing now, I'm still, I'm still at the point of trying to put some of those main lines down that I want to accentuate, those eye beams, kind of getting that part right. And so what, when I'm doing this, in order to try to do it relatively quickly, I'm looking at relative shapes. I'm going, okay, if I want that up and, up and down beam, the one that goes from up in the sky down to the ground, to be in my drawing in kind of the right place, how close is it to the edge of the building? And then the top part, how far up does it go? And does it, which side of the peak is it on? Well, I'm already seeing that I'm drawing it on the wrong side of the peak, but you know, this is an abstraction and I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about, nobody is going to go to uh, the Gananoque Waterfront Barge Factory in Ontario and tell me my drawing is wrong. So, but I do like that one angle. I like that one angle of the I beam I see. So I'm gonna try to get that bit right. I'm gonna make it go right off the top of my, my drawing completely. So this is the sort of thinking that I go through when I'm drawing something is, you know, ev everything that you look at, you're making a decision. Do I want it in there? Do I not want it in there? Do I like the shape and size it is? Is it gonna work with my drawing? And then what happens is you will have not drawn something correctly. <laughs> I can guarantee it. And then you go, well, wait a minute. You know, does that matter? Do I have to change it? If not, do I have to adjust anything else so that my new drawing works? And um, oh, this is cool. I'm going to have to do this one again um, when I'm not trying to chat to you at the same time. So another thing in order to sort of get the windows in the right place, because that's always a bit of a problem, is that you can look at where the other windows line up, see if they're the same. You can look at where those brick patterns break. Uh, you know, how, how do they go? So once you've got the basic bits down, you know, without much detail, you know, here are the windows, here are the I-beams, here are what I want to do. Then what I'd like you to do is without too much fuss, go ahead and start working in values. So using whether you're using charcoal or pencil or you're going to mix it up a little bit, get something where you can do your darks and, and find where those dark areas are and just go ahead and draw them in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. It, it's actually good that we're under a bit of a time constraint because if I was already starting to get like, I was starting to get some detail going there that probably didn't need to be in there. All right. So I'm just going to, I've got a very generic, don't even know what kind of hardness is charcoal pencil. 
and I'm going to go ahead and um, get some darks in there. And the first thing I discover is that this is a very soft lead. So I'm going to try to just work with that, work with what it's doing, even though that was not at all what I had planned. <laughs> and that is the fun of, of dealing with abstraction is that, um, you know, when I do my paintings and stuff, you've seen them, they're very realistic. There's a, a lot of planning that goes in, you know, preparatory sketches and this, that, and the other. When you're working with mixed media, and particularly if, say, I was actually out in the field, I was out literally in a field in front of this, um, this building, I would just, you know, something gets started doing something, I would just have to, you know, keep trolling along. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep looking back over at this Maurice Wade thing and go, well, how would, you know, how would Maurice Wade do this? How would he handle this? Um, what's what's interesting and important and what I can see right now is that if I keep drawing too much more in terms of the darks and stuff and if I don't start making big shapes I'm not going to get the Maurice Wade sort of feeling so I'm going to turn some of what I see I'm going to start making into bigger shapes I'm going to get a different charcoal pencil or pencil that isn't quite so dark I'm just going to use the side of it and very quickly try to get some big areas in here. So there's a lot of decision making, isn't there, as you go along? And there's the, the time constraint. So when you're looking at this also, you know, if you look at, at what Maurice Way did, he's got areas of light and areas of dark. So we want to kind of, you know, maintain that same sort of idea where some things are going to be darker than others. So as you go, you're constantly evaluating, well, which, you know, which ones are those? Which are the darker bits? Which are the lighter bits? So even if you're just working in pencil and you're not using anything else today, or if you're working in any media, remember that you can vary the pressure and make things lighter or darker, um, you know, just by using a little bit more pressure, maybe using the side of your pencil rather than the whole of your pencil. Well, I just did that and I've just discovered that the value I've made in one place is exactly the same as the value in another. So I'll need to come back and do something about that. So that wasn't the intention. So when you're working in more than one media at a time, it, it become, it, to begin with, it's very complicated because you're not sure what they're going to do. And just like me, I'm randomly picking things out of this box. And some of it was a good idea and some of it wasn't a good idea. And you just sort of work with it. But then what happens is after a while, like next time, next drawing, right, that we do, I'll be like, ah, oh, I know a little bit more about what's going on. I'll be able to pick, a, make a better choice when I pick up something. And maybe, I, maybe I'll use one drawing media and not another because it'll, and it'll start to become your favorites. You know, you'll start to get the ones that you, that you really do think are going to work. Okay, we've got five more minutes to go on this one. As you go, just keep your light areas as light as you can. And if you, if you are working in mixed media and you have either a white charcoal pencil, white Conte, white colored pencil or anything like that, if you're working on colored paper, don't forget to re sort of reserve that for, for that last bit. If you're, if you're working on white paper, try to keep those light areas clean. And if you've got to go back and pick them out sort of with a, with a, uh, an eraser to, to do that, to have that contrast going, you know, don't, don't forget to do that. So I'm getting, I'm getting some idea here. Wow. I'd really, I really want to do this one. I really keep trying to draw with the end of my pencil and doing, do too much realistic stuff. And I have to, I have to sort of guard against that. The other thing you can do too, is that it doesn't have to, even though uh, Maurice Wade's drawings are very flat shapes, if you want to do some, you know, some one-way hatching or cross-hatching or something like that on your drawing, you know, do feel free to do that. Um, you can still sort of make flat values, but have them be made of lines, um, or or you can have an outline around an area, and then you can do your own cross-hatching to sort of get where you want to. Some of this interesting marking that you see on the wood lends itself very well to, to a sort of a cross-hatched um, approach. All right, I've got to start thinking about how to, how to bring this, how to bring it all together. What needs to be tightened up here? What isn't, isn't working? Where's that dark area that I wanted to make darker? All of that kind of thing. 
So you're not, you know, in, like, like all of our drawing exercises in 10 minutes, you're only going to get so far. Um, this is just sort of a, a warm up exercise as we go in. And I'm hoping that I've included some other, other photographs. I hope you might have the opportunity to, to go back after this and, and try some of these scenes again and may, perhaps make, you know, better decisions the next time through. That's, I think that's what I'm going to do because I really like this. But I can, I can see where I could have made some different decisions up front. I've got some values that aren't exactly what I want. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just as a, as a last hurrah, as we finish up, I'm going to see, I'm going to really risk ruining the whole thing. I want to try to include some of that orangish Conte crayon in here. And let's see if, let's see what happens when I do that, because that could, I could just send the whole thing over the edge. <laughs> so what have I got? I've got some sanguine. Yeah, I think I'll just go with that and see what, what happens. Now, once you introduce color, you're trying, you're deciding at that point, you know, how is the color of interest? Like, is that, is that important? Do I have to use now use that reddish color all over the place? And I'm going to decide not to. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to solve my problem of the values of one building being too closely in color to the other by just changing one area to something something that stands by itself. And I don't know that it's going to work, but it's um it's a valiant effort. <laughs> and actually now that I've done that, I'm going to do that to the girders too. Let's we'll see what happens. And lastly, because we're down to the last minute, um I'm going to add some white in really quickly to my sky and such and see what happens there. And yes, I promise I'm going to show you what this looks like because it's only fair. I, I know I never give you guys enough time to really get these drawings done the way you would like to during the class. So it's only fair for you to see that any struggles that you have are the struggles I would have too. All right, let's wrap this one up. I'm gonna just put a border around the edge so you can see it on the camera a little bit better. All right, so this is sort of, this is where I got to with mine, all right? Just sort of big shapes, uh, not particularly detailed or anything like that. I just looked at the overall uh, design of it and tried to keep that that detail that I would normally gravitate to out of it. Because if I, even if I hold it back away from the camera, what I want to see is sort of the design aspect. Now, when I look at this now, I go, well, okay, I, I probably, if I wanted to balance this out, I need a little more darkness down here or perhaps a little bit more of that red because that would give me some of that, that, you know, that terracotta all over the drawing. So that's the sort of thing that you look at when you're doing an abstraction. You're, you're sort of saying, hey, I find this building really interesting, but what needs to happen is I need to concentrate on the overall interesting, like what, what, made me stop and take this photo. So if I was this person and I was walking along, it would have been that overall design. That would have been what attracted me to it. You know, I wouldn't have been looking at all those little things that we saw as we started draw, uh, drawing, all those things that ended up distracting us. Um, and so the notan, <laughs> the notan, but the notan idea, and then going to an abstraction, doing a little drawing like this, that helps you key into what what those important parts are, you know, what, what those things are about that scene that captured you first. And then if you do decide to sort of take that to a more detailed drawing, you look back at this kind of thing and you go, okay, I need to keep to those ideas, those essentials I saw. Now you can then, if you wanted to, you could take this drawing that you did and say, well, I'd actually like to abstract that even further. I got myself you know, perhaps a little more too, too much detail in there than I wanted, perhaps I can really boil this down to the basic elements and, and go from there. So, you know, abstraction definitely is whatever it is that you want, uh, it, you want it to be. Oh, somebody said, please hold it up again. Someone said rulers, yes. <laughs> and yes, it absolutely would be fun to do with cut paper. Um, I think that you, you know, when it comes to deciding if you want to do, to use rulers and that kind of thing, 
this is completely up to you and you'll see that in just a second so here's that here's my little drawing again i'll kind of hold it so you can see it and you know i mean i was doing it on the fly and i was doing it while talking and it looks like it but i like i like kind of how i got just those basic shapes in there because that is not my normal inclination i would usually if i was out there and i had three hours in front of this building i would be way off into drawing bricks <laughs> so let's move on from here all right so charles demuth now he is a he was based i believe in lancaster pennsylvania but he must have spent a certain amount of time um, around coastal areas um, or, or waterway areas because he has a certain amount of that art and so these were done around the 1920s and he was definitely being influenced by cubism and all of that stuff going on i particularly love his work because of the very clean clean approach and he when it came to abstraction he was attracted to form and design, but um, in, in, he was able to somehow eliminate an awful lot of stuff and kind of move and combine objects to make, to make an interesting overall design that may or may not have been what he saw. So as we were sitting there doing like that abstraction of that building, we of course were basing it on, on what we saw. When you look at his work, you'll see that he took elements and move them around to sort of make something up that keyed in on the bits that he thought were the most important. So if this is machinery, for example, within, within uh, you know, some industrial type of place, somehow um, he decided to see, oh, or somebody, uh, actually, I'm going to say uh, somebody uh, couldn't see the artwork because it was just on my screen. When I, at the end of the class, I'll show it to you again larger when I'm the big picture and you'll probably be able to see it better. So, um, so in this particular uh, scene with Charles D DeMuth, obviously there were windows in this factory, but he decided to put them in places where the windows didn't go. But to still, you still get that feeling, don't you, of, of some sort of industrial interior um, with an outtake going out the wall and with windows of a particular type. So this kind of thing is just wonderful. It's taking that sort of idea of what we were just doing with the building one step further. Now it takes a little bit more planning. Um, you, there's no doubt that you've got to sort of think through the overall design that you're looking for for your composition and then sort of pick elements from what you're seeing and bring them over. So for sure, Charles DeMuth did a preparatory drawing. Um, you know, he definitely, this is really well planned out. And then he would have done, um, as you can see, he left the marks of his drawing underneath, even though he added some paint and such to it, because uh, he liked that. He wanted it to be th that to be part of the overall effect in the end. But I don't want you to think that he just sort of sat down and, and did this off the top of his head. There was definitely some planning. And this is a, this is a wonderful drawing. Uh, he's included some watercolor in here as well. Um, what we've been seeing before, those were, were mostly painting. And, and he mixed media in terms of dry and wet media together, which, you know, please feel free to do that. So this is really great. You know, can, can you actually walk up and down these stairs? Not necessarily. But he might have seen some falling down stairs at a factory or something interesting. And, and you know, just combined various views to make an overall interesting design. Once again, we get kind of a sense of, you know, of the structure. We don't. We can see that there are some windows there. We can see that this is a possibly a dilapidated building or at least an older building. Um, you know, we don't know everything there is about it, but that's not that's not what he's drawing. He's not saying, "Hey, here's this interior, and this is exactly what it looks like like a photograph." What he's doing is he's abstracting this concept of the stairs and and the windows and the framework that he's looking at. Um, and, and just turns it into this really great design. So here's another one, roofs and, and steeple. Um, yeah, it is like a set design. Uh, somebody just commented that it's like a set design and very much so. And then in this particular case, this is sort of the roofs and steeple. Um, wherever he was sitting, he saw a variety of elements and combined them into you know, a design where he decided what was going to be light and dark. You know, when we were looking at that, uh, the building a few minutes ago, we were, we were going very much with, you know, what we, what we saw and sort of translating that the way we have been in realism. In this particular case, we really don't have much of an idea of exactly what it is he saw there. You know, obviously there were a lot of, of chimney pipes and, 
and you know upper clear story windows and uh you know and then of course the the steeple itself but he's just sort of like picked and chosen various different things um that he wanted to highlight now something like this he he would have drawn out the lines first of most of what he wanted to do so you can and you can see that you can see the, the you know the line the directional lines he chose and then as he did the watercolor on top of it and a little bit of the drawing on top of it he was making decisions as he went about the different values and probably just like me on this one was going ah that one should have been that should be a little darker i'll add a little more here or, or you know hey that was dark so i'm going to make the one over here next to it light so you can see the difference so this isn't done this, these decisions aren't being done with an idea of okay and now i've got to make it the right value combination as if this was realism he's doing it like hey i need to now make it the right value com combination so i like it as a design so I think this is so important to to understand that you you can make changes yourself. You don't you do not have to be tied to what you see like uh you know like a like a camera. You you it's realism, it's not realism as you choose. It's the right color or the or a different color as you choose. It's what you see and what you think is interesting. So here we've got, you know, light coming down, falling in various different ways and this particular building um, behind it. Now, uh, he, was, he was getting quite adept at eliminating and editing and this and the other by the time he got to this point. He uh, did not have a long life, and unfortunately, this was getting close to the end of his life. He was really getting quite sophisticated in his choices. So, um, but this idea, you know, you can leave the lines in, you can add lines that aren't there. It's all a matter of, of what you think uh, a, an abstraction should be. Um, you know, here, here again, you know, he just he decided only to put color in certain parts. He's got the, uh, the lines drawn out, various different, you know, bits of light coming down, something coming out of that chimney. Was there really something coming out, coming out of the chimney? Probably, but he decided not to make it look smoky, you know. Um, so just, just kind of fascinating to look at something like this and sort of think through what, his, as an artist, you're looking at this and going, what was this process? You know, what... What did he see and, and, and why? Why did he make the decisions that he did? So now we're gonna do something like that. And so we've got a, and once again, actually this one, I'm gonna just give you a very few minutes because I don't want you to worry about values and stuff. We're just gonna take five minutes here and draw out what the lines and shapes would be if we were going to approach this like a Charles DeMuth, because I would love for you to take this one and do something a little bit more with it on your own time. So in this particular case, and you don't have to do the whole thing. For example, if you want to just concentrate on those two or three wheels over on the far left, um, you know, or just on the poles and the tubs on the far right or something like that, feel free. What I would do is say, okay, I'd like you to practice, I, if you've got a ruler on hand, you can use it, no problem. Or you can just practice trying to draw your lines as, neat, as carefully as you can using your whole arm to get the straight line going where you want it to. You can check your angles or not as, as you see fit based on, well, partly based on time, but also kind of observe those observe those interesting wheels and where they fall so when you approach something like this if you see machinery like this and you go hey i'd love to draw it what you want to do is start off with the start off with the easiest shapes so for me i'm drawing that big white and, and yellow girder those those lines first because i see that first then i'm drawing the two angular lines that come off those and then from that i'm going to sort of segue a bunch of other lines kind of move myself across my little rectangle I've drawn over over to where these wheels are because I feel like those are like the, the next big shapes. So what's great about this sort of approach is all those, we don't have to erase anything. All those lines can just stay there. They don't even have to be, you know, our, our accuracy on the ovals, it, it'd be nice if we get a, get a little bit of accuracy, but they don't have to be. We could do it all just in, in linear form um, we could actually even break down those uh, those oval forms into just you know series of, of lines and make oct octagons or whatever gons. <laughs> By the time we get all the lines in, in fact, I'm going to do that because that's kind of a neat thing. I just started doing that so I could show you, and I'm like, well, I actually like that better than the circular form because then I've got the spokes of the wheel that I can do as lines and get that in there. So. 
in doing this, in having to approach a complex object and breaking it down into these lines and shapes, we end up with a framework from which we can either choose or not choose to go forward in a realistic manner. We could, we could either you know, say, well, I'm going to still base it on the values I see because I would like this to be realism, or we can say, you know what, this is a great framework and I'm just going to color it in like I want to, basically. Um, I can make lights, I can pick the, the shapes that I think are the most interesting, make those into uh, lights and darks, and I can um, I cannot even worry about what the scene was originally. So one thing I am adding is I, I'm adding a few of those lines on the ceiling because I think those are kind of um, important. We've got thick and thin lines going up and down. We've got round things. We've got sort of a sort of a repeating shape in whatever the uh, the structure is that's holding up this particular bit of machinery. And then we've got some interesting lines over here on the right side from these buckets and stuff. So we're just going to, and we're going to wrap this up right now because I don't, I don't want you guys going too far. I just want the basic shapes down there. So what I've got, which I'm going to try to hold up as close to the camera as I can so you can see it in the, in the corner, but I will show these at the end, is just a structure, just a framework. But from here, because, because this is a really a relatively well-balanced photo, therefore my line structure, and yours too, I'm sure, is also pretty well-balanced. It, it gives us already the framework of a composition by just looking at the angles and the forms and going no further whatsoever. And the abstraction then, uh, not only is this abstract by itself, this is abstraction, but what you choose to do from it from this point on, you've allowed yourself now to move one step away from realism. You know, you didn't start in there by, by making sure that one wheel was exactly accurate and going on from there. Um, you can still decide to do it, or you can say, hey, maybe I'll make the whole thing just various different shaded areas, and I'm going to now make that one wheel look really realistic, and maybe one of the buckets, and maybe that's what's going to be interesting about this drawing. So these are the sorts of things that I can't tell you exactly what to do you know, what those decision, decisions are, how, how you should make them. But I want you to be able to, you know, if you see something interesting like this, for example, and go, hey, that would be kind of cool to do one of those abstraction things on. But whoa, where do I get started? That you realize that, you know, that breaking things down into the essential lines is a good way to start. But also, you don't have to draw everything. So I, I took this and then I cropped these into in three different ways so that you could take a very complex scene and you could say, wait, I could make kind of an interesting abstract drawing out of this. Now, you as an artist in your mind will always remember that this is what it came from. And so that feeling of, of machinery, industry, dirt, <laughs> rust, whatever it is, can be incorporated in, in your artwork. Um, but it, you don't always have to show everybody everything. And likewise, every detail doesn't have to be shown for everything. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you're somewhere interesting and you've taken pictures of something that you think would be good for abstraction, when you get home, you look at those pictures and you start to think of your drawing as having to be the whole of your photograph. I want you to, to, to stop that and, and think, wait, if I crop down to just an interesting area, how can I get a really good design? Because that's what I did for the thing that we just drew, where we drew all the lines up. It was a larger photo. I cropped down to what I thought would be good design. And when we drew the lines out, it confirmed that to me, that, that we were on the right path. So now let's go on to something a little bit different, just to, to end this all up. So um, Joan Erdley is a, well, she was a, an incredible Scottish artist. She was, um, uh, I think she was born in England, but lived most of her life um, uh, first in Glasgow and then, then by the coast. And so she has become, her work has, has become much more popular recently. And as she worked through her life, she became more and more abstract. This is close to the end of her life. And she had taken, you know, abstraction, you know, way as far as, as uh, she ended up uh, uh, going. So, these are paintings that she did um, where she is employing abstraction. And I just wanted to show these to you because, so abstract and abstraction, you know, someone just asked, you know, is that different? 
Not really. Um, you know, we talk about abstract art as being something like this. Um, and, and I think everybody kind of realizes that. But the path to get to an abstract piece is the concept of abstraction. So somebody is, you know, she is, she is using abstraction to get to a piece of abstract art, I guess is a good way to, to put it. Because you can either abstract something to the point where it's not recognizable, or you can still leave a certain amount of that recognizable quality in. But what you're not doing is you're not doing representational art. So abstraction is different from representational. Representational would be, hey, I've got my coffee cup here, and I want it to look exactly like a coffee cup, and I want people to understand precisely how a coffee cup looks. Whereas these are houses, for example, in the distance, but they have, they have been abstracted. She has sort of used abstraction on that. I know it's a very, uh, it's, a hard, it's a hard term to sort of, you know, to grasp. And I think different people interpret, you know, interpret it different ways. I like to use it as being a way, abstraction is a way to step away from sort of scientific realism um, to sort of incorporate something a little more interesting into your, your drawings. And in this case, you know, for a wave, you can see, well, the concept of wave is there, but this is not at all a detailed sort of wave. So um, how she did that when it came to drawing was it was very interesting. So some of her earlier drawings are extremely realistic. She, she knew how to draw, there's no doubt about it. But you can already see her sort of applying some of, uh, of the principles that we saw DeMuth using, where he's just breaking down, he's seeing what he, what's you know, realistic, but breaking it down into the forms that are interesting to him. So you know, how do you decide what is abstract and what is not? Basically, the minute you're starting to step away from a really close representational view of whatever it is that you're painting or drawing, you are starting to create some degree of abstraction. You know, if you sort of blend the whole background of the trees that you're in your drawing into sort of sort of a misty distance because you really are focusing on the, the thing that's in the foreground, you are you are employing abstraction because you're creating the idea of trees without drawing every single one of those in the background. So you see in, in Erdley's uh, drawings, she's attracted to, to certain shapes and forms and stuff she sees, and she just draws them out. I mean, she wasn't thinking about, hey, is somebody going to look at this in you know, 50 years from now and, and assess how my drawing was? <laughs> you know, she just, she just saw it very interesting to draw and, and then um, you know, accentuate the forms that she really liked about this, because in her, in her back of her mind, she's probably thinking of this as how is she going to paint it? You know, what are the things she's going to want to accentuate in her painting? And she often mixed media together, you know, charcoal, pastel, <laughs> drawing, uh, graphite, whatever, to get to, uh, to the scene that she wanted to look at. You know, she didn't, she didn't hold back with the application of things. Um, and, and yet she would also draw just in one medium like charcoal, but she was very drawn to shape and the repetition of shape and contrast. So you've got the woman in her bundled cloth, the softness, and then you've got the, the hard curves of the, of the uh, area in the church where she is sitting with her prayer book. Um, and, and the contrast between those are obviously what um, attracted Erdley here. This is a, an Italian landscape, um, and she has just she's keying in on the forms. Perhaps it's the the rose in the fields, the the people working in the fields in the uh, nearby terracotta on the top of the building there, and then these tree forms. So, to a great extent, as an artist is sort of sitting out in the field and is is thinking about what they're going to do in terms of abstraction, it's very much your sensory response to what you're seeing. Now, if you're a person who's drawn towards angular things, um, then you might be a, a DeMuth sort of, of, of artist. If you're drawn towards the flat design areas of something that you see, you might find that you're a Wade sort of artist. If you are drawn to the, the organic shapes and the contrast between them, it, you could be an early sort of artist. So everybody's going to have a different response to the design, what they think is the design that they see in the scene. Uh, here, John Bollum was, was reacting to the feeling of birds in flight, what he felt that birds in flight were doing, maybe a flock lifting off or something like that. Um, in this case, Walter Hoyle, you know, he's, he's 
still veering close to the representational. You know, you can see wheat, you can see Queen Anne's lace, you can see a tree in a steeple, but he's abstracted them into design elements by not putting some things in, by using light and dark to accentuate, you know, the, the shadows falling down the, in the distance. The interesting design of the Queen Anne's lace is isolated from the background because he kind of abstracted the rest of it by just sort of making it uh, a middle value of grass-like structures. So it's very individual and you'll get better at it the more you do it because you'll start to you know, pick and choose, just like Hoyle did. He picked and chose. This is the type of drawing you've done, you do after you've done a lot of them and you, and you have uh, you know, veered more towards the making a big mess. And then the next time you go, whoa, I'm gonna make a little bit less of a mess because I'm, I'm gonna pick this out. So we're just gonna do this last exercise. We only have about seven or eight minutes to do it in. But what I'd like you to do is sort of based on the, the, the Joan Eardley sort of, of view of keying in on um, the light and dark areas and sort of just sort of responding to what you see by sketching in, just don't be careful. This is not one where we're going to do it like DeMuth with all the lines and stuff. Draw the big shapes of the stones up front. Draw what you feel is the softness of those trees in the middle ground and the darks of what's going on in the back. And if you've got different media to try that with, you know, see if you can sort of uh, mix those up a little bit. I'm going to try to do a, a quick sketch along with you. And I, then I'm going to try to answer some of the questions in chat too. Um, it's, I think that the, the, all of these terms, you know, abstract and, and representational and, um, you know, abstraction and, you know, uh, there, was, there was one that I came across today describing Charles Wade's work that I'd never even heard of. Um, objectivism or something like that and which I hadn't even I had heard of that sort of as a philosophy but I'd never really applied it to um you know to to the drawing and I, I was like okay well there's something new for me to learn so what I'm doing is I'm starting with that dark tree in the background and I'm just really I, I love that shape of that tree I'm not really worrying about lights and darks I'm just kind of doing the haystack uh and ladder sort of approach of everything being kind of messy and then not worrying about at all about those other bushes back there. And I'm leaving all of that soft stuff, those two kind of pine trees. I'm just sort of figuring out, you know, those little candlestick shapes on the right and the fluffy thing that's going on on the left. And then I'm getting down to the, these, these cool shapes of stones at the front. Now, Instead of shading in the stones, what I'm doing is I'm doing the dark areas around the stones to kind of form, at least on the sides, to sort of form the, the stone-like shapes. But I am not worried in seven minutes about whether this is actually gonna come out looking like stones or not. What I am doing is just sort of trying to see what the elements, what the basic elements are of this scene. And already I find that I'm way I'm, my stones are getting in the way <laughs> of my trees. What the heck? Because um, <laughs> I didn't plan this out. So what I do like about it, though, is that as you're doing this, I mean, you have to make some quick decisions, don't you? You're, you're going, well, how am I going to handle that? I better start regulating my values. Otherwise, everything's going to look exactly the same. How can I do maybe some hatching? You know, how can I... How can I do some very light lines, maybe for the, some of the from some of the texture on those stones up front? How is that all going to work? And then to pull in, then to go into my little bag of tricks here, and I'm going to pull out some other maybe charcoal to use because what the heck? And I'm going to sort of smudge some stuff in in some of these middle tone areas. I don't know if it's going to work. I really have no idea. And now we've looked at we've looked at three extremely different um, types of of abstraction today. So if you're at this point right now going, I'm confused. I don't know whether I should be doing the flat abstraction or the abstraction with the lines in it, or the Joan Eardley abstraction, or or something else in particular. Don't worry. Um, you know I've thrown a lot at you, and I did that in part because different types of abstraction register or resonate with different people and appeal to them in different ways. And because I want you to start pulling this into your drawing, 
I wanted to present a few different ways to go about it that you could then practice depending on what, what you like the most. But it's good to just have these artists work in your head, I think. Um, you, you may come across a scene where you're like, oh, I like this, but I don't know how to, I really don't know how to deal with it. And then you go, wait a minute, you know, um, what, would, what would Maurice Wade do in a situation like this? Or you might see a scene that is very Maurice Wade-like. Um, and I will also point out that, you know, when I show you these artists' work, I'm showing you three or four, I'm trying to, I'm basically consolidating a whole lifetime of art and drawing into just a few minutes so that I can show you something interesting to try. But many of these artists throughout their whole life did lots and lots and lots of different types of styles. They experimented, some turned out better than others. Um, some they, you know, you could see how, oh, they, they said, oh, that kind of worked. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna to, to bring some more of that into my, um, into my drawing. So I'm finding that I like the charcoal on this scene a lot. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with those fluffy trees. So because we've only got a couple of minutes and I want to go back to the, the full screen, I'm, I'm going to just sort of, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something with a, just sort of try to make some fluffy shapes and then leave it at that. Because that's, <laughs> that will be where if I do a scene like this again, I'll have to figure out how, how I'm going to go about it. I haven't, I haven't figured that out at all. And so this is also, you know, when I do a drawing, I often do it in the middle of the paper and then I leave some room on the sides and that is the experimenting area. So that, you know, if I need to sort of test out, oh, I'll, put some, I'll put some of this light charcoal in, maybe that'll help. <laughs> It'll help it differentiate from everything else. Um, that's where I can test out whether a particular thing is going to work, you know, around the edge going, if I, if I use my pencil in that way, Will I get the effect I'm after? So I still ended up veering in mine, as you'll, I'll show you in a minute, towards sort of a realism, like maybe more than I really wanted to. But it certainly is more abstract than some of my other drawings. So go ahead and wrap this up if you would. And I'll go to the full screen. Um, I'll show you <laughs> my little sketches here. And I'll try to answer some of these, um, these questions that are, uh, are in chat right as you're wrapping uh, wrapping up. Um, let's see. Oh, the medium used for the wave was very, very thick um, paint. Now, yeah, when you sometimes when you look at abstract paintings, you don't see anything recognizable. You know, it took, I will tell you, it took me a long time to really start to appreciate abstract paintings and drawings. Um, you know, that was relatively dismissive about them, I have to say, for a, for a long period of time. Um, and let me go ahead and stop uh, screen sharing at this point and, and we can sort of wrap it up. Um, you know, I was like, hey, what the heck are they doing? You know, they're just sort of, you know, they're messing around with charcoal or they're just throwing paint at the walls. You know, what's, what's going on here? And I had to start seeing work like DeMuth and, and, uh, oh, and Wade and, and Erdley and, and start to appreciate the whole process a bit more to see how they got where they were going. Because for many of these artists, and I can't, of course, speak for all of them, you know, they've got some idea or some concept in their head that they're trying to get down and they're trying to eliminate the, anything that's within, that's in the way of, of that concept in their head. Whether we understand it or not isn't always, you know, the most important thing, I think. Although I feel personally that it's useful if even if through the title we can understand a little bit of, about where they were trying to go um and i think there's good abstract art and and worse abstract art i think there's uh abstract art that's simply decoration looks good over the sofa and there's nothing wrong with that um and i think there's also art that's abstract like erdley's where she's out literally with her canvas in nature and she's just trying to eliminate almost her mind from from putting all that information in that we always talk about the, the way oh, look at my finger it's covered with the charcoal <laughs> um that we always that distracts us and just trying to get the essence of what she sees down onto the paper or onto the onto the painting and so there are the, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. That's kind of where we're getting to next. I just wanted to start off this week with this idea of, of breaking down scenes that we see that are very realistic into some kind of 
of less realistic uh, uh, approach. So in this particular case, I just did this really sort of rough sketch based on the Japanese garden. Now it's relatively representational, but what it did do was it stopped me from filling in all the little trees that I saw. If I were to do a painting now based on something like this or a, or a or more complete drawing, as a matter of fact, I would be I would use this you know, the, the design that I now see in this, right, the darks and lights, I would use this as a way to say, hey, that's what I think is most interesting about this. I'm going to make sure I accentuate that design concept, and I'm not going to worry about the fuzzy trees. I'm not going to worry about putting in the detail and making each one of those pine needles look right. So on the one where we just had to draw the lines, this is what I ended up with. Very, very simple. I just put the basic lines in there. But it, what an interesting balance of shapes, you know, of, of vertical and horizontal, of, of round, of, of uh, ellipt you know, elliptical. It would be very interesting, and I think I'm going to do it actually, to take that to the next step, to, to draw that out again and go, okay, where am I going to? What, what is it that I see about that that I like the most? And how am I going to accentuate it? The first drawing we did, I tried very hard to keep to these flat shapes. And like I said, if I was going to do a bit more, I'd come back and probably balance out the reddish color I put in other places by putting some dark down here. Not because there was dark in the original um, uh, photograph, but because I th now think that the design requires it. I, I think I need that balance. So I hope that this is useful um, to sort of see how this works. I know it's kind of a brave new world, and we did we just went through three extremely different forms of abstraction. But I'm, I'm hoping that now when you see some of this, um, you know, somebody called it in the chat, semi-abstract. And I think that that's sort of, you, you could definitely say that, you know, there's, there's abstraction in it as well as a certain amount of realism. It's not as if we have completely lost um, the scene. But this is what I want you to, to definitely understand is that, you know, you can involve in your realistic artwork, if you prefer realism, you can involve realism and abstraction together to key in on the main elements that, that you're um, after and, and get to get people to focus on the thing that you think is really interesting about the scene. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. Now, next week, what we're going to do is we'll try a couple of different exercises where we, where we are after a concept like speed or motion or, uh, or, or somber or you know, words like that and how we use all the various different things that we know how to do and symbols, line, shape, it, and all of that kind of stuff and mixed media to create a feeling, to get, to get that sort of emotional response across. Um, and, and because that is also something that we can use in small or large quantities in our realistic drawing as well. Okay, everyone, thank you very much. Well, and thank you too. Very Look good. Look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>